Hello everybody. All right, this is in response to a request from Complex Blackness. Um, he often looks at my videos. He often asks for videos, so um, here you go, bud. Um, <clears throat> he asked me, what's my opinion of the World Self-Defense Championships? Um, you could technically call it a World Championships. It looks like six people, mostly from North America um, and ROCAS, and it's in Australia. Um, I think it's more of a promotional thing than an actual World Self-Defense Championship. Uh, maybe they want to get more people participating and paying money for this one. I doubt Sensei Seth and I see Mike and Jeff Chan and et al. paid a dime for this. I think they were funded to do this, and I think it's Rokas' idea. Um, more or less. Now, I watched the first video in its entirety where they fought on the bus. I watched snippets of the others, and I also watched um, Dan the Wolfman's reaction to the knife video and clips of that. So, right off the bat, welcome to 1985. I'm sure Rokas and these guys think they're doing something groundbreaking, incredible, amazing. Um, 1985 brothers and sisters I discovered um, the way of the sphere and also Dao Te a break off of that the way of the sphere was founded by uh, Dennis Dwyer in New Jersey um, and Dao Te was founded by Sensei Mike Bronson who branched off from that it's an Americanized branch of karate we were doing stuff like this on a lower budget we didn't wear padding we wore geese we didn't wear hand protection or anything you were allowed to wear a cup if you wanted to nobody checked but I don't think anybody really did we used control and we did stuff like this mass attack sometimes we turn off the light sometimes we'd have the class in a circle and another part of the class in a circle facing them and you would just attack each other at random sometimes one person would be in the middle and depending on your rank and experience people would attack you one at a time two at a time sometimes with simple attacks like lunging punches and lunging uh skip sidekicks and things like that sometimes with compound attacks right and I remember a couple times, you know, he'd turn off the lights and he'd throw, like, pads and chairs and a heavy bag on the floor. And just, you know, people would take turns being the defender and the attacker. And, uh, you know, it would sometimes be random. And Sensei Mike Bronston was like that at the Hamilton YMCA. They were very innovative. We did stuff like this. We didn't have a budget. We didn't have the equipment they had. We couldn't rent a bus. So congratulations, MMA generation has discovered what, you know, a lot of American and Asian martial artists began to discover in the 70s and 80s and flesh out. Uh, Grandmaster Jose Gonzalez has told me, for example, that when he trained with Preston Carter, uh, part of the belt test, you would go to a, a park in Trenton, which is a rough area in and of itself. Just going there could get you mugged. And, you know, after you had done all your kata and run, running a mile or two and all the push-ups and sit-ups and everything, and um, the one steps, then you'd run to the park and you'd run around, and then uh, you were told to travel along a certain route, I think, and different people would ambush you one or two or three at a time, and they, they'd hit on you, bare knuckle, but it was controlled. Um... We did that in many schools that I was in. I sought them out. Um, what can I tell you? I'm impressed you guys are starting to look into this. Um, the bus scenario, I, I think all of you did pretty good, decent. Um, many of you didn't do as well as you thought you would do. And what I find hilarious is uh, Sensei Seth landed high kicks on a bus and Ramsey Dewey landed a few taekwondo kicks um, there were quite a few knees and elbows and there was ground and pound and I thought it was hilarious that Ramsey Dewey didn't realize he was getting effed up by Icy Mike because Icy Mike began hitting him in the balls and he's like, Master Wong would have been proud because he, he hates Master Wong and Master Wong hates him. And he thinks Master Wong doesn't know anything about fighting. And I think Ramsey Dewey doesn't know as much about street fighting and self-defense as he thinks he does. 
Um, folks, any style can access this training. It can be done without the gear. It can be done with different levels of contact or no contact. I've seen quite a few demonstrations of Sansu where they do stuff like this. And, and there was one brilliant demonstration. I think it was 1987 with uh, Jimmy H. Wu presiding. And at one point, the lights were off, and he turns on the lights, and there's just a mass of students just attacking each other randomly and dealing with it. They weren't going full speed, but they were making contact. They were doing techniques. They'd take a person down and stomp on them, and then that person might retaliate from the ground. Then they might separate and attack, and it didn't look choreographed at all. Welcome to 1987. Welcome to Sansu. Welcome to the Way of the Sphere. Welcome to many Jujitsu Ryu, traditional and Gendai. Welcome to uh, many Okinawan Karate styles. Welcome to many of the Southern Kung Fu styles. Welcome to Bak Mei. Uh, welcome to Southern Shaolin. The knife stuff. Y'all got murdered because you don't know how to use knives and you don't know how to defend against them and you tell yourselves that you do not know how to defend against them and here's what's funny sensei seth did amazing he did very well and he used a lot of karate techniques he used a lot of traditional techniques and the sport techniques and mixed it up he's also a big boy uh, when it came to the knifing, everybody got stabbed. The only one that did a okay was Rokas, who found a way to use Aikido techniques and principles. The art that he says doesn't work. Um, welcome to 1936. Um, I, I like most of these guys. I don't like Rokas because... You know, Dan the Wolfman gave him like a two-hour interview and he talked about all the different ways in which he could make his Aikido functional. He has many videos on his channel where he does functional Aikido. And Rokas just ignores it because he just wants to say, you know, I've come to the conclusion that Aikido is useless because my understanding of it is useless. And I think two things happen here. A, he just, the art wasn't transmitted fully and properly. In his lineage and also B when he actually had an altercation he used Aikido he entered he did a Rimi and he did an Atemi and it worked and he because he didn't wind up doing a fancy Aikido technique he was upset with himself but he survived in self-defense he won and there wasn't a mark on him there was a very old school famous martial artist called, called Grandmaster William Chung. I think he's still around. Um, and he was an elder Seahing of Bruce Lee. And he said that one of the biggest problems with the martial arts is that one teacher, you know, teaches everything but he holds back some. And then the next teacher holds back and the arts get thinner and thinner and weaker and weaker. And I think that's happened with a lot of traditional arts. And some of it is because the new generation just rejects parts of the teachings they don't understand or they find tedious. In the way of the sphere, I talked to Grandmaster Dennis Dwyer, who's still around. He's got to be in his 80s or close to 90s. And I said, yeah, you know, they told me that at one point you had kata. And, um, you know, I wanted to learn more about what, what the kata was like. And they said that, you know, everybody decided to stop doing him, uh, you know, you phase them out. He said, no, we didn't phase them out. I taught them. He said, first I taught Tangsudo katas, and then I developed katas consistent with the principles of the way of the sphere, a martial arts system based on natural law and previous material. He didn't mention that. And, uh, you know, his black belts eventually, you know, they got their black belts and they decided to not do him anymore. They just wanted to do the self-defense and the flow and the attribute development. And all that was awesome. But the art had more and there was information in those forms. Mike Bronston, I don't know if he threw out um, all the forms. I know he taught forms and he may have developed them by himself or he may have kept the old ones or modified them but that there's information right sometimes you can transmit all the techniques of a style and you don't 
transmit the harsh training the experiences it's sort of like if you held marine corps boot camp and you had people run and shoot and and get yelled at but you just instead of you know having to pass a running score of making three miles in, in this amount of time you you allow them to do it in twice the time they still go through the training but they don't develop to the standard or you may omit certain things what if they said well you're gonna learn rifle but you know I know when I went through in the 80s a after you finished rifle range there was like a whole week of learning how to do crew serve weapons and and you know a little bit more realistic combat scenarios and what if you just left that out right uh, you still you know passing boot camp and you can still shoot and so on and so forth but things have been taken out and nothing better has been put to replace it right we no longer teach people how to use spears and and swords but we've you know we've got bayonets and we've got rifles and we teach them you know how to shoot pistols right so a lot of what they're doing would benefit any martial arts style and martial artist and a lot of what they've rejected like the groin strikes when you're in that bus if you whether you're on the top or bottom if you, instead of hitting those testicles which if you didn't have a cup on believe me ramsey dewey and all the other guys would have you know stopped what they were doing and, and adjusted to it if you give it a couple hits and then do a tiger claw and start grabbing and twisting the testicle part um there's there's video footage of two army guys in the barracks having a fight and one guy puts the other in the guard and when the other guy's in the guard he grabs a testicle and the other guy screams and opens his guard um, not that any of this stuff is bad not that the guard and, and the ground and pound and underhooks are bad but double underhooks against the guy who just keeps stabbing you is a dumb idea right and no amount of technical training no amount of hitting the bag and doing kata and practicing techniques is going to prepare you for that chaotic situation completely but if you do your basics if you do your technical work and then you do the chaotic training and then you go back to your technical work you learn how to make things work by the way uh, again i think this was 1984 or 83 there was a guy named tony blower in his panic attack nothing new people welcome to 1983 <laughs> The stuff was around for a long time. You hear about people training in Asia where, you know, you'd be training in Okinawa and, and aside from Kumite, they would do mass attacks and, you know, um, things like that. Aikido. A anybody who's listened this far, I'm going to reward you. I'm going to tell you about the secret esoteric teachings of Aiki Jiu-Jitsu from Takeda Sokada. And the guy who taught both the founder of Aikido and the founder of Hapkido. Are you ready? This is no BS. This is an esoteric internal teaching that's not part of the curriculum, but it was part of what those founders learned and got drilled into their skulls. You ready? Takeda Sokara, when he taught in his private dojo, after class, after the conclusion of his formal classes, him and the black belts would do sumo. They did it regularly and they did it for years. And they stuck to the sumo rules. They combined the sport martial art of their day and the traditional combat killing martial art of their day and they used the attributes developed in sumo to strengthen and enhance their Aiki Jiu Jitsu. Historical record. Yeshiba himself said that in, a, in an interview and it was written down. Welcome to the 1930s and 1920s. This self-defense championship, I think it's a, a good thing. I would actually like to see it become an international competition, but I hope they're not going to go around saying they've invented this. They haven't even invented the idea of a self-defense competition because I think it was a... Uh, I think it's American Budoshin Jiu-Jitsu with George Kirby. 
They had jujitsu competitions with self-defense competitions. I have been in gung fu competitions at NACMAF, for example, where there was a forms division, a weapons division, a sparring division, and there was a self-defense division, and we demonstrated self-defense techniques. And it could be against any kind of punch, kick, grab, whatever, and people got creative. I know that Tomiki Aikido does self-defense competitions for sport. Okay? And that was, I think, the 1950s or 60s when that started. You practice a type of sparring where one person is attacking you with a padded knife in a certain amount of ways, and you're defending and, you know, kicks and punches and so on and so forth. Welcome to the 1960s. The those of us and those of you that have cross-trained a variety of martial arts know that training sport martial arts, training things like kickboxing, training things like MMA, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Judo, sport karate, all these things, they can give you good attributes and you should know that there is an encyclopedia of effective techniques for life and death situations that with some training and with updating of your training methods and, and the methods of um, things like positional sparring, right, can be used to take those ancient skills and translate them into a modern situation, a modern battlefield or street situation effectively. It's been done. <sighs> Folks, I love the fact that so many children are learning karate Taekwondo, Wusu, Kung Fu, Judo. But at one point we turned it into daycare and we lost many of these truly combative and life saving elements. And then, you know, I the ATA for a while, I don't know if they still do it, were teaching Krav Maga. Right? But you have a, a martial art that even in its basic forms, has punching, kicking, kneeing, elbowing, finger attacking, and techniques that are actually hidden takedowns. You, you then took it out, lost it, maybe stopped practicing it because it made people uncomfortable or instructors forgot, and then you imported something else to bring those skills which you threw out back into your system. <sighs> I don't want to keep on ranting right there's nothing truly new under the sun there are new ways of combining things understanding and interpreting them and let me tell you something if this becomes a professional competition come to me come to me and i will show you how to train for this thing i will tell you all kinds of ways to train safely semi-safely low intensity moderate intensity high intensity for this type of thing and whatever the prizes are you will be able to win them I guarantee you I will do a better job than any MMA coach out there alright y'all have a good day